Well, ahead of the Breeders' Cup Classic, all the talk in America is about one horse and one horse only. Officially rated the world's best racehorse, the horse in question is Flightline. We're going to discuss his chances and just how much of a star he is in the company of the sporting life's Ben Limford and FanDuel TV's very own Christina Blacker. Christina, has he transcended the sport of horse racing, this horse? No, oh, absolutely. I mean, everything that we've discussed in the build-up to this championship weekend has been about Flightline. He is the show. When he came out for his final breeze earlier this week, there were more people there just to watch him work in the morning than I think we get on a Saturday sometimes at Santa Anita, and especially in Kentucky. We're here in horse country. He went right through the ring here at Keeneland. These folks really feel an affinity for him. They feel like they know him, and he's the star of the show. His last race in the TVG Pacific Classic was, with my own eyes, the best race I've ever seen up, up close like that. I, I hope that we get to see something similar because it's that euphoric feeling that racing can bring that even if you have a bet on another horse in the race, even if you're a trainer of another horse in the race, when you see greatness like that, when you see brilliance in sports, you can't help but get carried away emotionally and just appreciate what you're watching. Can, can you contextualize what he's doing in terms of other greats of the American racing scene or are his numbers meaning that you can't actually contextualize it? Well, I think the knock on him is that He's only had five races and he's had issues with his feet over the last few months. John Sadler has been really candid about that. That's part of the reason why he hasn't run as often. But there's also such a big emphasis on the speed figures here and horses not regressing off of big races. And the way that you mitigate a bounce is to give them a lot of time. And I know John Sadler really believes in the bounce theory. And I think that's a big part of why he's had so much time between his starts. But if you just think back to his last race, he had gone a one-turn mile two starts back at Belmont in the Met Mile. He won that race. His first ever two-turn attempt was at the mile and a quarter. Very few horsemen would say, let's jump from a mile around one turn to a mile and a quarter around two, let alone into grade one competition into the TVG Pacific Classic. Not only did he win that race, he beat the Dubai World Cup winner by 19 and a quarter lengths. I mean, that's how good that race was. Those weren't a bunch of claimers behind him. Those were exceptional horses. And to get back to the third graph figures that I follow, he ran a negative eight, which is the fastest figure ever given to a racehorse since they started the figures. Wow. And it's by far the fastest. Yeah. And as his first two turn race, that should be the base. He should move forward for this weekend. Which is frightening. Tired time form, obviously, um, the rating system that a lot of us use in, in the UK have him rated. Not quite Frankel territory <laughs> yet, but he's not far off. He's not far off. Time form rating 143. Now, they've been producing American uh, uh, rating since 1993, and he's obviously um, the best that they've ever marked up. I think Cigar was the closest, five pounds off him on 138. So that's the sort of things we're talking with Flightline. Frankel's rated 147. He's the highest rated horse in thoroughbred history, according to time form. Um, Seabirds 145, Brigadier Gerard and Tudor Minstrel 144. So he's already in the top five, Flightline. And, you know, if he comes on and improves and does what he did to Country Grammar against these rivals, we could be looking at the top, the number one, the best ever. For me, when I think of Flightline and I see and hear the buzz about him, it does bring back memories of when Frankel was it racing. It really does, because yeah. as you say, these superstar horses get everyone watching the sport, which is what we all want. Do you, do you feel that as well, that level of sort of fervor and, and excitement about him? I do within the racing community, but I have to say, does it not be I don't know that? that he goes as far into some of the other mainstream sports right. fans as you would hope. I think this race can do that. I think if they bring him back next year, that will definitely enhance his credentials. But for the common American sports fan that just would dabble into one or two days of racing, it's the Kentucky Derby. So actually, Rich Strike, who is the long shot winner of the Kentucky Derby, might be a horse that more people on the street would know his name right. versus a flight line right now. So, so what would he have to do, I mean, other than win the race by 25 lengths? Is that what he'll have to do to become revered? It's just the way the mainstream media covers horse racing here. It's just different. It's just not as big of a part of our sports culture. but. The headlines come with big performances, and so he's just going to have to keep adding to that. And I think in any sport, anyone can appreciate perfection. You continue with a win streak. That's why Zenyatta was so followed and revered. She kept winning. That's why Cigar had the following, because as they keep winning, 
I think that's what continues to bring more people onto the bandwagon. You mentioned the foot um, issues that he's had. I mean, provided he's sound on the day and, and is 100%, can anything beat him? I don't think so, because I, I think he, he's, he's the fastest. If Flavian Pratt wants to just go out onto the lead and burn and chase and let everybody, you know, dare to chase him, he can. But he's also intelligent enough and smart enough to rate. He's really come on mentally. You watch the way he trained a year ago. He looked like life is good. He had his head up. He was fighting the rider all the time. They're always playing give and take in the morning. Now he's a professional athlete where his mental capabilities have caught up to his physical prowess. And I just don't think there's any stopping him. Uh, Christina, um, Ben, thank you very much. You might be able to hear a commotion here in the in the, the hotel bar that we're in. Uh, that's not actually for Flyline. What people don't know is that Ben is actually a very good country and western singer, and his team are setting up the stage. You're treating us tonight? <laughs> because he's, he's doing some karaoke. <laughs> but tomorrow, all eyes won't be on Scoop. They'll be on Flyline. Saturday evening, uh, enjoy one of the world's very best horses of all time in action in the Breeders' Cup Classic.